Hey guys, welcome to Split. Today we are looking at the Google Pixel Watch. It's been a long time coming for most Android users and at $349, is this the one you take home at the end of the dance? Let's talk about it. Okay, so for $350, it does some things well and others not so well. So let's talk about the good parts first and then we can cap it off with the nasty things. Not so nasty, maybe it's just me, you tell me at the end. What it does well, starting with design, the Google Pixel Watch comes in gold, silver, and matte black. I went with matte black because black looks good on everything, makes everything sexy. But if you're looking for that silver, a bit more traditional or flashy, you might wanna go with gold. Silver, you might wanna go with traditional. Black just goes with everything. That's me personally, but that's my thing. It comes in only one size, uh, 41 millimeters. So if you have big wrists and big watches are your thing, small watches are not, you might as well just stop the video now and leave because it only comes in one size and this is what we're working with. One size, remember that. And in terms of what it does well, which is what we're talking about now, the design is pristine, right? If you're looking at this puck, it looks like a perfectly rounded gorilla glass and stainless steel puck only interrupted by a physical rotating, like a physical crown right there. And that crown is tactile, but more on that later. And, and looking at it, it's just well-crafted. It took some time to think it through. It looks great. If you can take the time to, you know, figure out how the lug system works and change your straps, you can get an even more traditional look or just swap out to a sport band like I have here for when you want to work out. Either way, works out for you. The screen can go up to a thousand nits so that you can see it clearly in daylight. If you flip this puck over, you're gonna have blood oxygen, ECG, and a heart rate monitor. That heart rate monitor just goes on and on and on and on. That's a great thing when you have act for accurate reading. So that's what it does well. It gives you very accurate heart rate monitoring for resting, working out, it can tell you when you're in active burnout mode. That's cool. But still talking about the design here, the lugs, right? When you swap them out, you have to use this proprietary clicking system that Google has created. They claim it's like swapping a camera lens. Some people have, you know, whined about it being finicky and all. It's not, once you get it, I think once twice, for me personally, it wasn't that hard. I think it's cool. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good mechanism. My, I can see how it can be a problem for some people um, if you have really big fingers, but it's not bad. The hitch here is it's proprietary. You can just swap out any lugs you have at home and, and change these out, you know? So Google's gonna make a bit more change on that with, with productions specified for this watch. So if you're gonna buy, you're gonna fork out between 50 to 100 plus dollars, depending whether you're buying a leather or steel, just to make your watch look different. I suspect third parties will start to make adapters and stuff, you know? Gotta trust our people out there in the world to adapt anything, but keep that in mind if this is the watch you're looking to go for. So that physical crown, right? Like it's a, it feels great. It's not there for fancy. When you rotate it, it's just convenient when you're reading messages. It even has haptic feedback clicks to make you feel like you're actually turning a gear mechanism inside the watch. Very well done. Kudos to Google. On top of that is a button, which you can use to get to your recently used apps. Or if you hold it down, you can talk to the Google Assistant to tell it whatever you want, which is another plus with this watch because everything Google just works out of the box. This is Google in its pure form. This is the real Wear OS, not the adulterated, I don't mean that in a bad way, the version that you find on Samsung, because Samsung had to switch it up because it was a merger between Samsung and Google, so they changed some of the navigations a bit. On the original Wear OS, which is what you have here, the swipe down is the same to see your toggles for quick settings at the top, but when you swipe up on this, that's where you see your messages, your recent messages that's coming from your phone or direct to the watch depending on the version you have. When you swipe left or right, you get tiles. So whatever tiles you've, you've set as your primary tiles, workout tiles, heart rate monitor, you're gonna see that when you swipe left or right. The button, the crown button, when you hit it, it can take you to your list of apps, basically everything the watch has to run. And like I said before, the button on top of that takes you to your most you know, recently used app, yada, yada, blah, blah. And you can use that main button as a back button. And you can just swipe back from any app or option you're in to go back like Android, so that, you know, that whole software integration works just nice. And this is where we start to sort of balance into things that could be better. They're good, but could be better. I talk about fitness tracking. On most other smartwatches, fitness tracking is predominantly resident on the watch. There's fitness tracking here, but it only gets good because of the bolt-on, and I say bolt-on with of, of Fitbit, because Google bought Fitbit, and now they've integrated sort of Fitbit into the Pixel watch. 
I say integrated because they sort of try to keep it separate and you'll see what I mean in a second. There's the Google Fit app on my phone and then there's the Fitbit app on my phone. The Fitbit app, once I set up here, it dumps the data there, not Google Fit. Maybe there's a way to do that, I haven't figured that out yet. It's just not seeing Google Fit. And it's doing that because out of the box, this gives you a six month subscription you know, for Fitbit, which gives you detailed fitness tracking, sleep tracking, which is pretty awesome, shows your REM sleep, yada, yada, blah, blah, make suggestions, your training schedule, training tracking is all, this, all in there. Fitbit, what happens after six months? You're gonna have to fork out that 10 bucks or so a month. If you don't want to, you go back to basic fitness tracking. But what happens then, I'm not sure. Is it, is it gonna be forced to see my Google Fit or am I just gonna be forced to stick with the account I was forced to open on Fitbit? Well, I had one anyway. But so you're running Fitbit and you're running your Google Pixel. I think the integration could have been a bit better. So it's just one device. I know from a business perspective, it may not have made sense to try and kill that off. Fitbit has a big community, really big community. But there has to be a middle ground to the consumer who wants to buy this device and not have to buy another Fitbit device. Uh, but we can discuss in the comments below. What else could be better? I think the size could be better. Um, yes, if you have small wrists, this will work for you. If you're looking at it from a distance, you may not really notice that it's quite small on my wrist, but I can tell it feels small. It, it feels, you know, like it should be a bit bigger. I think that would be the sweet spot. Maybe, maybe they gave you the way Samsung and Apple gave you options for the 40 all the way to 44, 45 if you're a pro guy and you could find what works for you. I get it's their first watch, maybe, you know, but I would have gone with a size or or a notch, maybe two notches above this. 43, 44 millimeters, I think would be the sweet spot for it. But that's me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But the problem with that, going with the small size affects a couple of things. I was gonna say two, maybe three. One is you need battery space. And without battery space, this watch suffers. The battery life is really bad. It's not really, really bad. It's, okay, maybe like one really bad, not really, really bad, it's bad. Google says this can go up 24 hours. I've never gotten that, especially with the screen on. I'm trending at about 17. On, the, on some days I've done heavy usage, maybe 13, 15 hours. And if you turn off the screen, yeah, you, you could totally do a full day. But if you're into sleep tracking, that means you're gonna have to charge the watch twice, either right before you go to bed or in the middle of the night so you can run the next day. It's, it's a tough sell on the battery part. So if you want always on like I have here, you're gonna have to actively charge this watch you know, remember, you can't even survive a bit into the next day, it'll die. Uh, again, it's because of that space. The second thing the space affects is the speakers on the watch. This might not be a big deal for a lot of you who don't use the speakers on the watch, uh, but if, if you are looking for this watch and you want to ring or something, the speakers are really tinny, almost shrill if you're playing music. <laughs> it's like, and, and again, drivers need space to, to push air. You, you, know, you know the physics better than me, but that's what it is. And that's why it's, it's so tinny. Thirdly, you have a small battery in a small space, but the watch is constantly taking your heart rate. That's good for accuracy, but that's bad for battery life. When you turn on battery saver mode on other smart watches like Apple or Samsung, the first thing they do is that they ping that sensor less because they know they're taking power from it. So the less you ping that sensor, the more power you save. That's not the case here. I don't, I don't think uh, Google got that memo because even when, when I tried sleep tracking, it's still measuring constantly. There are even widgets to show you your heart rate in real time. So while that's good, it's also bad. Besides, besides wants to know their heart rate every second. How paranoid are you? And those are, those are things that I think impact the user experience on this watch, in, in my opinion anyway. Well, yeah, it's Google. One, because of the price point. Two, I think they've had enough time to refine this, but again, it is their first product and it is physically pretty, again, I agree, but if you're paying that price point, there's some features you've sort of come to accept from other watches. Take for instance, if I'm walking for 10 minutes, my Samsung watch will tell me, hey, you've been walking for 10 minutes, auto tracking kicks in for a lot of exercises. I have not witnessed that on this watch at all. Um, swim tracking is basically just a timer on this watch. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, it's not counting the strokes or anything. If you're a swimmer, it's something you should be concerned about. It's just really a timer that you should, that you're gonna get on this versus what you have on the other premium smart watches. But other than that though, I, I think it's a very clean package. Software integration is great. It's great to have Google Home on your wrist, you know, turn things off and on. It's great to have Google Assistant right out of the box. 
It's great to, you know, communicate with your phone whenever you need to. I say communicate loosely because I tried charging this thing conveniently on the phone. It, it, at first it acted like it wasn't gonna charge and then I tried it on the Samsung charger. It indicated there was power, but it wasn't charging. I tried it on another cheap charger, it indicated there was power, but it wasn't charging. I put it on its own charger and it charged up just fine. But I think it does charge up on the Pixel now. I'd, I maybe I had an update or something, but it's, it's picky. Bottom line is what I'm saying. So you're gonna stay in the Pixel family. Or maybe that's what Google's trying to achieve, keep you locked into that ecosystem. If everybody's doing it, why not us? So bottom line, if you're really committed to the Google Pixel lineup, yeah, this is a watch for you, but I would say wait for the second iteration because this will not hit all the expectations you're looking for, especially if you're used to the other smart um, features you're getting from all the other smartwatches. Although it'll do all the fundamentals, music streaming is great. It has great space and everything you need to download your stuff and just pair, leave your phone at home and work that out. Uh, but I will struggle to recommend this wholeheartedly knowing that there are other smartwatches out there that do it just a bit better. Uh, it's not enough to look pretty and pristine, um, size, battery power, and a few of Joe's whistles and bells here and there, I think make the difference of choice. It is in there for consideration, like I said, but it won't be in the top three of my list. But that's just me personally. Please don't ruin my algorithm, Google. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment below. A like and subscribe would be great. I will see you guys when I make a comparison with the other smartwatches I've been talking about and probably the whole ecosystem so we can make an informed decision. You guys take care.